Okay. Perfect. All right, stop. Bye, Ron. All right, so I'm going to give it another minute, then I'll start admitting them. It looks like we have three in the waiting room, but what I've noticed is students tend to pop on right at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I guess you guys don't like to make small talk, and I'm a big small talk person, so they don't want to talk to me. They've seen me on every session, these kids, so they're tired of seeing me. People get used to virtually doing stuff last minute because they like the extra time they get from not having to take buses to places, so they go doing last minute for everything. Yeah, well, I think people just don't want to be the first person. That's my uh, biggest fear is being the first person on the call. And then you're just like, hi, <laughs> how are you? So I think that's why people join like two, three minutes later, because they know there's going to be someone on the call. See, you have to look at it through the lens of a student. I was thinking, what? They don't like me? How come they're not logging in? It's just that they're like that for everybody. But I'm going to start admitting them. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rutgers Business School session for our living learning communities. We appreciate you joining us. So kind of an outline of today. I'm Christine Yanuzzi. Some of you may know me. I am the admissions officer specifically for the business school. But our presenter for this evening's session is Dr. Leggett. So she will be presenting, talking to you about the Business Discovery House, as well as the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Living Learning Community. Did I get that right, Dr. Leggett? Right, right. I've been practicing. That's a mouthful. So um, she's going to talk to you about two different living learning communities. We're going to have um, Melba Blanco, who is our first year advisor. She'll be monitoring the chat room along with myself. And then we have two current students who are also joining us so that they can provide the student perspective. As I always tell students, talk to students. They spill the tea, as you guys say. They're going to really tell you what it's like. So they're the best source of information. So we are recording this session. It'll be posted to the RBS website by tomorrow. Um, but I encourage you to use the chat, ask questions. Um, once the presentation is done, you can even unmute yourself, hop on camera if that's OK with Dr. Leggett. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to her. So welcome, everyone. So glad that you're able to join us. Um, before I give my long title and all of my information, I want to have uh, Victoria and then Enzo introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Victoria. I'm a first year student here at Rutgers, and I am a part of BDH, which is also known as the Business Discovery House. I'm also the advisory council member for um, our LLC, which means that I'm basically, you know, I take care of improving BDH and making sure that our students have everything that they need. I'm a finance major here at Rutgers, and I'm going to be starting an internship next summer, so I'm excited for that. And I can't wait to talk to you guys about BDH because I love this program. So I'm excited to get you guys to apply because it's really great. Hey, everyone. So my name is Enzo Ruda. I'm a sophomore majoring in finance and marketing with a concentration in entrepreneurship. And I am a second year mentor in the Entrepreneurship Innovation LLC, meaning that I, took, I was a regular a student last year really enjoyed it loved it came back and now i'm like mentoring some of the, the first years that are doing that which has been a lot of fun um fine so on top of this i'm also in the road to wall street program and i'm also the head of mentorship for the road to silicon valley program which is another entrepreneurship based program that started at rutgers and i also have a, a finance related internship for this summer thank you for introducing yourselves so um I and my title, my official title is Assistant Director for Living Learning Communities and Academic Initiatives. And I'm also responsible for um, diversity education and international programs with Residence Life. So um, we have approximately 18 living learning communities here at Rutgers. It varies from year to year in terms of interest. Um, but I dropped uh, a link into the chat if you haven't already seen uh, to our first year page. So that's updated. So outside of um, even the business discovery house and entrepreneurship and innovation, 
there are other communities that you can explore, but those are the two that we're gonna talk about today. And I hope I don't do a lot of the talking today. I'd rather the students answer some questions for you. So um, in terms of agenda, we're gonna talk about what is an LLC, the benefits, eligibility, and requirements. So as you know, but, um, Rutgers is a large institution and we have about 15,500 beds on campus. And so, you know, lots of resources, lots of opportunities, but students sometimes feel like it's just a little bit too big. And so the LLC uh, allows them to find their space, find their home, um, business. Usually we don't have more than 60 students in the LLC and they're on various floors within the building and entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and innovation. This will be our third year running the program. So um, we try to keep it around, you know, no more than 30 students. So, you know, from 15,500 down to 30 students, uh, folks that you'll see, you know, day in and day out. So making Rutgers a smaller space is one of the primary pieces of our living learning communities. Um, we also, uh, you know, you'll come to know folks quickly because we pair you, we link the courses, right? So. Um, so for example, for business, you're gonna take uh, macroeconomics in the fall and then um, basic composition or ex, uh, expository writing, right? So we ensure that the folks that are in the LLC are in those classes with you. Um, and just a note in terms of, we usually get students who are like, oh, I've AP'd out of everything. Um, I don't recommend, unfortunately, that you take part in the LLC if you have AP'd out of everything because that means you won't necessarily be in the courses with the students. Um, you will only see them probably um, via the, the residential experience. So living learning communities are for folks who want that common link between the class and the residential space. Um, so yeah, you're gonna take macro and expository writing in the fall and then in the spring it's micro and computer apps for business. That's generally the setup that we do. And then for introduction to entrepreneurship, um, we something I should note, in order to take part in the second year experience, which is just as exciting, uh, you have to uh, take part in the first year experience. So if you're unsure, um, I would say, you know, both of these communities are uh, this year opportunity. Uh, you might not have that opportunity uh, next year. So take advantage of it if you are thinking about being a part of any of these communities. Um, the business LLC does not have a second year experience, but entrepreneurship does. And you have to be in the first year in order to continue to the second year. Um, the courses, again, uh, for, intro to entre for entrepreneurship and innovation are introduction to entrepreneurship um, in the fall. And then in the spring, you're taking uh, Rutgers Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship Leadership Academy, right? And those are exclusive courses. Um, for the intro to um, entrepreneurship, they're large lectures, but the faculty, they know who you are, they know who our LLC members are, and there is one-on-one -on -one attention um, for our LLC members. So uh, again, making large workers feel smaller. And um, some other benefits, we say, we have students tell us that they're making friends you know, more quickly. Um, we have peer mentors, who are undergraduate students who we hire, um, who will have that interest in entrepreneurship or that inter interest in business. Uh, and they also, um, you know, they, they're looking at their group, their group of 20 or their group of 60 uh, and saying, you know, who's the person who's not connecting? Who's the person who is, you know, lively, bubbly, the center of attention? How do we get that person to connect with various people within the LLC, right? So they're, um, their responsibility is to do programming for you, to um, help you explore your interests, and also to ensure that everyone who is in the living learning community is feeling connected to one another, to the interests of the community, and as well to faculty. So um, another benefit is having the faculty come into residence. So there's been a number of opportunities where you know, we had speakers, as well as the, the person that you would see teaching your macro course come into um, the residence hall to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations, kind of like a fireside chat um, space where it feels a little bit more intimate. And we've actually been able to do the programming virtually this year, but we are very much looking forward to <laughs> an in-person experience. So those are some of the benefits. And I would encourage if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them. Um, very shortly. So um, any other pieces? Let's see. 
I, for the entrepreneurship and innovation LLC, we also have the makerspace. So that's on the Livingston campus. And, um, you know, virtually we didn't get to take advantage of this opportunity this year, but um, in person, that's a space that's very close to Livingston campus. It's on Livingston campus, but close to quad three where um, this LLC is. And uh, you have access to all these different tools, uh, laser cutting, electronics, textiles, vinyl cutters. So thinking about like in that entrepreneurial spirit, um, things you might want to make for whatever endeavor you're working on, there's actually a, a space for you to go and you know, have access to, to resources. Um, you only have to pay for whatever materials you're going to be utilizing. And um, in terms of eligibility, moving from benefits to eligibility, um, again, I put that link in the chat. So take a look at what the application process is but uh, we ask that all students do their placement tests, right? So Christine, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you know within 30 days of being admitted to the institution, you should be doing your placement testing for the most part. That's correct. Okay, okay. right. So um, this is also an incentive to get that done. We want you to um, ensure that that's done because for business to qualify, you have to have a math placement of calculus and above uh, and place into basic comp or expository writing. And that's not something that we've determined that's something that um, Rutgers Business School has told us for the purposes of taking um, the, the courses. So make sure you're testing in. And as I mentioned before, if you've AP'd out of everything, this is possibly not um, the opportunity for you, but you can feel free to email me and I'll put that in the chat as well. Uh, if you have some questions you would like me to answer and follow up with you about. Um, you're gonna also, um, in terms of eligibility, fill out the housing application, right? So there's a box that you'll check. You say business or entrepreneurship and innovation. You have to choose one. So you have to choose between the two um, or you know the other ones as well, but um, choose one selection. And then we're going to reach out to you and um, yeah, ask you, you know, follow up with you about the, the process. For business in particular and for entrepreneurship and innovation, there is a supplemental application where there's a, a short essay asking you why you're choosing to be a part of these LLCs, um, what you contribute. Uh, we wanna make sure we're programming around your interests. So just think, you know, create a thoughtful, uh, well-crafted essay. Um, I believe it's no more than 250 words. So we're not looking for, you know, a dissertation, uh, something that gets to the heart of the matter. Um, we just wanna, we want you to demonstrate that you're actually interested in the LLC because these are one of our um, more competitive LLCs. And then in turn, last piece from me, requirements, right? So once you're in the LLC, are you just breathing in air, sitting back, doing nothing? No, you have to contribute. So um, when the peer mentors uh, put together these programs that they really put a lot of time into, you know, getting folks into the building or thinking about a concept fully fleshed out um, to attend those programs. So there's, uh, they'll do four programs during the semester and we ask that you attend two of the four. Um, they do group conversations during the uh, semester. We ask that you attend two of those uh, group conversations. That'll allow you to connect with other students. That'll allow you to, you know, again, explore your interests, have fun, right? So um, that's what that group mentoring conversation is about. And we ask that you, you know, just keep your GPA up. Uh, so a 2.0 and above is what's required for our LLCs. We think we can manage that. Um, and yeah, so those are the, the basic requirements to be active in the community and to be a, like just a general good neighbor. Um, so I am done talking. I want to move into the portion where we get to ask some questions of the uh, folks who are in the community. So my first question is, what did you enjoy most about your LLC experience? And so we'll have Victoria answer that question first and then Enzo. Okay, so I remember when I decided to join the Business Discovery House, the main reason why I wanted to join was because I was really interested in business and I liked a lot of, you know, the perks of being part of the program. And, you know, now that we're coming towards the end of the year, I asked, you know, all of my peers and, you know, I asked myself what made it so amazing. And the truth is, is the people, the people by far are this program, you know, the mentors, um, even, even uh, the teachers that you'll be working with. 
everyone is just so kind and the community that we've created in BDH. I mean, everybody I talk to, they're like, this is the best program I ever decided to do at Rutgers. You know, I'm part of like maybe seven to 10 programs here and none of them have given me the friends that BDH has. I would not have made it through freshman year because with everything being virtual, these were like, this was the only way really of being able to have a friend group and to be able to get through my classes, especially when the only thing you see are four walls every day. So I really owe BDH to being able to cope with the pandemic and having great friends. Thank you, Victoria. Go ahead, Anita. Yeah, so from my experience, uh, I actually didn't join the LLC right away. Uh, I actually uh, met almost all the LLC members through a discovery program that Rutgers offers. And from there, uh, base, it's, the story is very similar. I, I really connected with the people. Uh, they showed me around. I, I joined them on a couple other places, the Makerspace, and I just became really good friends with them and to the point where I was like, uh, I really like what you guys are doing here. And I, I, I applied and joined uh, for my second semester of freshman year. But I was basically spending most of the time with them. And I think, be, especially being on campus, there was like Rutgers provides so many resources for you to join and, and, and be active in so many different things. But having a group of like people who were super motivated and active was probably the biggest resource that I could have asked for. Because I was, we always had group chats where someone was saying, oh, hey, there's a case competition going on here. Oh, hey, there's a, a new program going on here. Like, who wants to do that with me? And you had a group of a couple of kids that were like, yeah, let's do this. And that's gotten to a lot of the programs that I'm doing right now that I really enjoy are because I had a group of people that were like driven and that pushed me and motivated me to join and do stuff with them. And so I think uh, all the resources are just having these people that were really dedicated and one that I have like really great social relationship with, but also push me to join a lot of the professional and stuff uh, activities that I'm doing right now. Thank you, Enzo. I think um, something you mentioned um, is really an important part of the, the Rutgers story, which is um, you joined in your second semester, right? And I don't remember if it was you or Alfred, but somebody put a little like bug in my ear. There's this guy, Enzo, he wants a part of the LLC. Is it okay if he participates? Um, and although, you know, we usually don't take students in the second semester, someone um, mentioned that and I believe advocated on your behalf. Um, and so we placed you in because there was a possibility, right? Because you also have to live in the community. Um, but when I say that's a part of the Rutgers story, because this is a large institution, you, sometimes you have to ask the questions, right? You, it might look like the answer is no but ask the question anyway, um, send an email to whomever and say like, I'm thinking about X, Y, Z um, and, and ask the question, right? All we can do is say, is say no. So um, advocate on your own behalf and get people to advocate for you when possible. So another question is how did the coursework related to the LLC support your ambitions? Okay, so what I really like about BDH is that all of the classes that you're going to take, you anyway have to take as a business major, but it's in the way it's done is it like tracks you. So you end up doing everything pretty quickly, but also the huge advantage is that you get access to these classes and you get access to kind of the best professors because like our mentor, he would pick, you know, one of the better professors and then we would all get put into that section. So being able to be with a group of people that you're all taking the same class with the same professor. I mean, it is so, so, so useful because you you form your own study group and you're doing, you're getting through everything together, and especially like when you're a freshman and you're learning how to deal with classes and professors and assignments, having that group is, it just helps so, so much. And you do get, you know, that extra perk where you kind of get like the better professor, the one that is more liked and you get like a special code for those classes. So you know you're gonna be on track with your business classes, which is really helpful. Yeah, going off that very similar, the entrepreneurship cl uh, classes aren't required of any business major, but if you have any ambition or want uh, eventually to like, have a record, uh, have an entrepreneurship kind of like have your own business or kind of thing in the future, which is something that I think I wanna do down, later down the line, uh, Joining and, and having this experience is a great way to experience a different type of style. There's, it's a lot of group work and a lot of creativity that can go into it. And it talks a lot about uh, kind of innovation and, and the, the people innovating and changing the world. And I think that's why I made a concentration of mine as well. I'm not majoring or minor, or I don't think there's a major, but there's a minor in uh, entrepreneurship. I think having that as a, a thing that I can 
that I know a lot more about now will help me later in the line when I want to start a business of my own. And it's been super great, uh, just like Victoria said, having uh, people that I was doing it with get me into classes earlier with the best professors possible, with the greatest opportunity, with a group of people that I already knew that I worked really well with and could go to for help. So that was super awesome. Um, and did, how did your peer mentor assist you with your transition to Rutgers? Um, so essentially, why was the peer mentor role important? Okay, so my peer mentor, well, we had two peer mentors, but for the first uh, semester, my main peer mentor was Mark. And he is truly the greatest mentor I have ever had in my life. He is the soul of this program. He has helped me with everything. Like I our like our, you know, our group of friends, we decided we wanted to do the Bender Trust competition. And, you know, right before the competition, every night he'd listen to us talk and present and he'd give us feedback. He does it all. He will help prepare you without him. Like I'm telling you, I would not be where I am. You know, I remember I was, I just texted him. He's like, how are you doing? I was like, I'm a little worried. I'm applying to this program, Road to Wall Street. And he was like, here's three people who are in the program, contact them, tell them, you know, me, and they will help you out. And he is like that for everything. So amazing. Like I'm sure that he is graduating this year, but the mentors that you guys will get will also be so, so helpful because this community is just like really tight knit. And the great thing about BDH is you've got so many upperclassmen who are also part of BDH who will help you. Like if they know that you're in BDH, they'll help you. And your mentor is kind of like that bridge between, you know, the graduate people who graduated from the LLC and people who are currently in it. So they are phenomenal and they do a lot of workshops during the semester to help you things like for, you know, business internships, um, interview skills, internships, you know, Excel workshops, everything you could possibly need. They'll really, they'll come out and ask you, what are you looking for? What do you want help with? And then they'll tailor the program to that. So they are the program, like the people specifically them, they're amazing. Um, they're the reason to join really. Yeah, so for from my experience, uh, my peer mentor was named Abay. He was awesome. Uh, we had uh, basically the way it worked was so the, since it was the first year, he was like our only peer mentor. So we didn't have like four peer mentors to go to. But I think one of the biggest things coming into college is there's a lot, there's so much stuff to do, so many opportunities for everything, and you got to figure out where like how to do all these things, where the best way to get classes are, and you have to figure out what major you want to do, and that can be sometimes stressful. But I think talking to upperclassmen is the best way to figure out and get their personal experience is the best way to figure out what you think you like before you like make a decision. And I think he did a great job whenever we had questions about like entrepreneurship itself or the majors that he was doing and the programs that he was a part of. He was so helpful in just giving us his his feedback, his uh, inside scoop kind of thing and and provide us with the opportunity to join a lot of programs, especially when we when he showed us the makerspace. That was an awesome program, uh, awesome place that we could go to that I visited a couple times. Uh, I know other people in the LLC used it for different products they had. I just used it honestly at first just for fun projects that I was doing on my own that I really enjoyed. But he really showed me anything and kind of like the ins and outs of records that you don't always just find. And I think that's super important because as a freshman, you don't know where to look. And so having someone like that to go to is super, super helpful. Um, thank you. And I appreciate what you said, Victoria, giving our mentors, you know, all the credit. Um, you know, but sometimes folks do fall short. So I will say that for this coming year, if for whatever reason folks aren't having the best experience, we do want that feedback. You email me directly, I will call you um, so we can have a conversation about what's working, what's not working, because, you know, like we're all learning and growing and we want this to be a really good experience, a positive experience for you. So uh, I'm not going to paint sunshines and rainbows. Um, it's important to be realistic about it as well. You might be going through some things, you know, for yourself, right? Um, missing home, missing whatever the case may be. The, the peer mentor, the RAs will help you through that. But our office, the learning communities office, we're very invested in this experience for you. So um, our last question is talk about the ability to make friendships via the LLC and anything else you believe uh, will be interesting for the students to hear about. So for me, obviously my experience was kind of different because it was virtual. So, you know, making friendships was, you know, really through Zoom calls and then texting, but um, obviously it was something really nice to have because, you know, apart from that, you really are on your own when you're virtual. There's no one to meet as a freshman. So you're kind of just like, oh, 
But um, so that was really great. It obviously gave me some of my closest friends. BDH was being together and having those Zoom calls, et cetera. Um, I would say, you know, the thing that really makes BDH special again is the name carries, like especially in business where networking is so, so important. Being part of BDH is going to help you so, so much. If you're interested in business at all and you want a program that's going to push you and give you friends, this is a really great program because then later when you want to pick other programs, there are so many people that you can contact that were also in BDH and it kind of gives you a leg up. So I think that that is something really, really useful. And again, like Enzo said, it is a huge thing is to have a group of people who want to do stuff with you, like all the competitions. Um, that it's really hard to find people that you're close with. Like for us, I think, you know, part of the reason that we won the vendor trust competition was because we had a group of people that were all really, really interested in it. And we were already friends. That is a huge advantage. It's going to take you really far in a massive school like Rutgers. So I'd say just like the community and the fact that you're going to have something that is going to carry you through your four years because people are going to recognize it is really, really great about the program. Yeah, so going going off that, I guess I could take a little bit of a different approach. Uh, my the reason why I didn't join right away my freshman year is because after discussing a little bit with like my mom and stuff, we figured we looked at the LSC and we said these could be great opportunities, and we thought maybe it would be too secluded. Like we were only going to be talking to business kids, and I wouldn't be able to see any other people in the business school or any, or anyone else like at Rutgers. And I felt like being like living with this LSC might cut you off from other people, and so we decided, oh, like you can just do business stuff, you can join them. And I think that's why I didn't. And after joining and be befriending all the people in the LSC right away, I realized that. I became great friends with them, but on top of that, every single time I went to the dining hall, there were some people that I knew from just regular classes that weren't even specific to me uh, being business. And I think that was super, super cool because I had friends that were completely not related to business as well as my business friends that I was really, really close with, which I think is important. So if that's something that uh, people are concerned with, I would say it's not an issue. It's something where like I had a great a balance of friendship with that, with the people in the LC as well as people outside of it. And then just going off of it, like people that I had in the LLC were so great. I mean, it was awesome, like being able to do the whole prize, which was a competition about creating our own company and walk out our door and go down like one set of stairs and all meet in a room was super, super easy and a great way for us to work on our, our projects together it was super exciting. And again, doing stuff to expand your network. The LLC is already a great network to start in, but joining a professional fraternity that I did with multiple people from my LLC uh, expanded my network so much and then from there i kept going and there's so many different connections that i have at rutgers and i think the lsc was the beginning that i had a, a great group of friends that was able to push me and i think that's how i've gone to all the different places in the Rutgers business school that i have thank you um so something i saw um as a direct message in the chat is uh whether this is a first year experience or you know what is this the Business Discovery House is exclusively for first years. There is no second year experience or continuing students. So you're either in your first year or not. Um, and the entrepreneurship and innovation, um, I, I stand corrected. We did open it for this coming year to um, transfer students as well. So it's for first year students, transfer students, and those students can go on to a second year experience. So once you're done, you know, 21, 22, you can come back for 22, 23, um, should you choose to do so. Um, and then another question is, where are these um, LLCs? Where do they reside? They both reside in Quad 3 on the Livingston campus. And it's, um, it's students are living and learning together. So um, what Enzo described about joining the second semester, right, uh, depends on the situation. But for the most part, we don't allow that because um, the housing is booked, right? Everyone is in their space. So unless someone moves out, you can't get in. <laughs> um, so that is the living learning uh, setup. And so it's something that runs for all the fall and all the spring. So you're in it for the entirety of your academic year. Um, a question that we sometimes get is, you know, like, what if I really don't like this experience? Um, can I move? Yes, you're absolutely um, able to move or, you know, you might be loving the experience, but maybe you don't like the residence hall, um, whatever the case may be. Yes, you can move. It's all about what space is available on campus to allow you to move. Um, so, um, Victoria and Enzo, if you don't have any like final words, I will open it up.
any other questions. If you want, I could do a quick rundown because I don't think I spoke as much about the second year experience as it differs to the first year experience. Just okay. like a quick minute about it. So as a second year uh, mentor, uh, we met the the new class, uh, like the new I guess, cohort, I guess you could call it. And it was super awesome as a freshman and sophomore, I, I did so much networking and asking people for help or connections and having people help me out. And it's, it's really cool to have to be able to do that the other way and the, all the stuff that I learned in all my classes and programs about like resumes and, and networking stuff was the same advice that I was giving people reaching out to me and it felt so great to give it back and I now I have a, a network of people even younger than me that are have all these great awesome ideas that I'm really close with and I think so being able to be a mentor in that sense has been really cool because we have the opportunity if you have your own company and stuff like some members do to go into like programs like i and and really expand on them but as well as like get that kind of leadership skill, which I think is important, as well as expanding your network and be able to help people, which is like a different perspective, which I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And for the second year experience, those students are taking ICE, um, innovation, creativity, and don't get me to lying on what the third one is. <laughs> um, but I know his tagline, Mukesh Patel, um, his, the tagline is transforming fluid thoughts into solid innovative ideas and ventures, right? So um, he's really trying to get uh, the students progressing in their ideas. It looks like you're unmuting in the- Oh, so yeah, it's uh, uh, innovation, creativity and entrepreneurship. And so that's one of <laughs> probably my favorite class that I've taken at Rutgers so far. If you have a chance, whether or not you join the LS or the BDH, like it's, it's not for a major, but it's probably one of the most eye-opening classes that I've ever taken. It takes such an interesting approach where it's not, oh, study for this exam. It's a, a really great discussion that almost everyone in the class was excited to talk about where we got to learn about some of the greatest innovators and of stuff within companies. A lot of TED Talks that you're learning about how to tra tra transfer your thoughts about like what's going on. And I think it was super great to have that kind of change learning style where everything was uh, accepted and you and you could just bring up anything you wanted to and that kind of open discussion was super awesome so if you ever take a chance to do it do that right now I'm taking managing growing ventures as well as part of this program which is the last part that I need for my entrepreneurship concentration and that's been so far a really great experience uh, learning about how to take a business and really grow it and, and know about like the different markets and, and what's going on with that and so that's been really exciting mm -hmm. And yeah, one thing, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention, just kind of adding on from what Enzo said, is that there's a lot of opportunities for leadership. Like for me, I got the chance to be the advisory council member as a freshman, and having the opportunity to have leadership as a freshman is pretty huge. It's really hard, um, and it's really, really helpful because, you know, I, during this experience, I learned how to create feedback reports, how to work with others, how to improve engagement in a virtual landscape, just a lot of skills. So that's another great thing. And then when you're a sophomore, you know, if you're part of the two-year experiences or even for BDH, you also have the opportunity to be a peer mentor. So there's always the opportunity to do leadership, which is something that, you know, is a great thing that everybody should have the chance to try out. So that's one more thing. Yeah, but that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, Christine, there's a question about where folks can find the recording after this session. So we're going to be posting the recording right on the RBS webpage. It should be up by tomorrow. So if you guys want to go back and listen to what the students had to say or the requirements, you can listen to that. Um, I do have a question for the students because you both talk about the importance of networking. And I'm fascinated, Victoria, that as a first year student in a virtual environment, how much networking you were able to do. And, and so even as a second year, sometimes networking is almost like the dirty word. It's, it's hard for, for students, for adults to go out there and network. So what advice would you give to maybe someone who is maybe not as outgoing as you? What advice would you give them to kind of start this networking process? Because I really am amazed by you guys. I think it's fantastic. And I know Mark very well. I remember him coming in as a first year student. He was the first one to arrive to our admitted student open house <laughs> all those years ago. And he sat with his parents. So it just warms my heart that you are talking about him with, um, you know, such admiration and, and what he's been able to give to you because he really is such a huge asset to the business school. But you guys have just overwhelmed me about how charismatic you are. So if you could maybe talk to a to the point of, of networking that might be hard for some students. Okay, well, for me, I mean, especially in a virtual environment, what was most useful was LinkedIn. 
Um, I had the luck where I did a program over the summer before I started Rutgers, which is like a part of Rutgers where they helped me create my LinkedIn. So I'd say that's the first step. But um, the nice thing about having a mentor is they can help you. Like I know for Mark, I asked him, he knew a lot of upperclassmen and he put me in contact with them. He said, just text them. So you don't have to be that outgoing then, but really it's easier with LinkedIn because it's not like you have to do face-to-face. -face. You can just send them a message. So I would say the best thing is to do that. Look for students and students that are a part of similar things such as you like, you know, a living learning community and just send them a message. It's really all it is. Um, at least that's, you know, that's really what worked for me is it's kind of a numbers game. So you're going to have to reach out to as many people as possible, go to as many events as possible, because each time you'll have industry professionals come and talk right after add them on LinkedIn and they'll accept you because they'll see you go to Rutgers. So I'd say the most important thing, which you're anyway going to have to do in business form, which is like one of the first classes you take as a business student is to create your LinkedIn. So work on that. First, reach out to students because you have to really think about it like kind of in a certain, that's how I thought of it is first go to students because they'll obviously accept you. And then after that, you can go to upperclassmen and maybe people who already graduated alum and start reaching out to them because then you're going to get like a network of a network of a network. Um, and that's kind of how you expand. That's what worked for me. But really, again, it's a numbers game. You just reach out to people, send invites, um, you know, look for people of similar interest to you, did similar things. And usually at the end of the day, you'll get something and go to events and meetings and just connect with people. So I'd say that's the best. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. <laughs> For me, I realized like the Rutgers education is amazing. There's so many great courses, but I figure I, what I realized is the best way to set yourself apart from everyone else at Rutgers is to join as many things as you can. It's, and it's the clubs and the experiences and the internships and stuff that you can get at Rutgers uh, that will set you apart and give you that experience that you can use like after after college. So it was my goal to just join as many programs as I thought I would like and that could give me as much experience. And I think networking that way, you got to look at it. I think LinkedIn is super important, but also when I guess when I'm in person, there was a lot of uh, events that I was going to and something I had to realize was I'm very outgoing anyways, but for kids who weren't, and most of the people that you're reaching out to were in your shoes just a couple of years ago and were so excited to help you. They they would be like, yeah, awesome. Like, yeah, you want to join this program? Here's what you have to do. And like, people were so excited to help you. And like you were saying, like people from Rutgers are a lot of people, even especially alumni are scrappy. They had to to make it to where they were. They did a lot of that networking and stuff themselves. So when you reach out to them, they're because especially just because you're Rutgers, they'll be like, I know this kid has something special in them and they're willing to help you and willing to talk with you, which I think is super awesome. While a lot of people are like, Rutgers doesn't get seen first by recruiters and stuff. They have a network of a lot of people who are dedicated to, and they know what it takes to be at Rutgers. So that kind of network is super awesome knowing that you have people that are one supportive and that are willing to help you out and then yeah again it just goes into uh stepping on your shell a little bit but realizing that the people are willing to help you and that the more stuff you can get a part of the the quicker that you can make a name for yourself and become someone that people want to like ask you for advice for which has been super humbling to go and do that and then now have people even just in my second year pick part of the LLC in like uh, my professional fraternity other people that are reaching out to me and saying oh hey like how can you can you help me get into this program or can you help mock me or do stuff like that like being able to do that for other people has been such a cool experience to like so quickly be able to be that kind of person for other people and the only other piece I'll add to that um, not that you asked me Kristen um is for networking um if you reach out to someone via email and you don't hear back give it a couple days give it a week email again email again email them again and I just say that because people get bogged down, you know, it depends on the time of the year, the cycle of our year, some points are just busier than others. Um, and I say that for like all fields. So just give it some time and then, you know, reach out again. It's most times people are just too busy and not necessarily like, oh, I'm not interested, you know? So um, that would be also my advice. Christine, I saw you in, unmuted. Do you have another question? No, I was going to say great advice. I was just so, you know, and also your piece to don't be afraid to email them again, because I think that's important. Sometimes we feel like we're bothering people. I don't want to nag them. So that's, that's definitely great advice. Mm -hmm. 
I saw a question about um, the BDH being competitive or LLCs being competitive. Um, so how you're evaluated uh, to get accepted into the program. It is um, a first come first serve kind of situation. We want to, right, so the priority deadline for housing is June 7th. So we're going along with that timeline. We would hope that um, folks uh, input their in information into the LLC application, the supplemental application, as well as their housing application by that point, because we really want to turn this over very quickly so folks know that they're in the LLC. And, and once we accept you, we just deposit you in. You don't have to you know, accept or decline. Um, well, yes, you need to decline if you're not interested, um, but you don't need to accept the LLC. That is something that's different from years past. Um, people might be on like a three-week vacation and they're not checking their email so they don't actually get to accept it and then it's too late. Um, so complete your application. We will accept for the most part. We're not looking to like ding you necessarily, right? Just write a thoughtful essay. Um, and as long as you meet the, the testing requirements, your SAS, SEBS, or RBS um, students, uh, for the most part, you're good to go. I don't see any other questions. I have a question. So when will students be notified? Is it July, is it August of their, if they're in one of these living learning communities? Yeah. We will, um, so just in terms of our cycle, um, you know, most students are leaving around like May 17th, 15th, like that timeline. And then we kind of get to focus on this work of just accepting students. So it'll be usually around after May, mid-May that you'll start to hear from us. Um, and literally just going through the list, looking at essays and, you know, accept decline. So you'll hear from LLCs, uh, relatively soon uh, and housing also sends out their information by the second week of August. If you are not, you know, for whatever reason you decide you're not interested in the LLC, they'll also send out that information um, and by the second week of August. Wow, so it's very early on that they hear from the LLCs. I thought it was timed with regular housing, but it's, it's much earlier. No, as long as the housing application is complete, right? Because some people start it and they don't do their deposit or whatever the case may be. Like you have to make sure your all your materials are done. Um, there's some people, I guess other issues could be accommodation. Some people are waiting to get uh, information about their accommodation. So they might, be, might not do their testing on time. Um, so those are some things that could be hiccups. I would just say like, like write to me. I put my email in there, ariel.legat at records.edu. So we can at least have it on our radar that maybe we need to hold a spot for someone because they are very interested, but they're being held up by X, Y, Z. Again, we want you in the program if you want to be in the program. We're not looking to exclude people unnecessarily. Um, another question we have is, can we do the Douglas program and LLC at the same time? Um, you have to live in residence with us. So if the Douglas requirement is that you must live in, in, in residence for Douglas, then no, you cannot do both at the same time. Um, I believe that's different than years past. Um, uh, you used to be able to be a part of the Douglas program and you know work be within our LLCs and then live on Douglas the second or your third year. But I recently heard that that had changed. So I would say check in with Douglas um, to find out what their standing is. But for us, you have to live with us. So yeah. Any other questions? Don't be shy, step right on up. Okay, I think I have another one. Oh, no, just thank you. All right. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to add. I'd say that if for whatever reason, these communities don't sound like they're for you, um, we have a number of uh, cultural LLCs, Paul Robeson to learn about the African diaspora, um, the Asian American identities and images, Latin images, French language and culture. You don't have to identify with those communities. You might just want to learn about those communities. Uh, French language and culture, you do have to have a French proficiency. So there's that. 
Um, and then leadership living learning community that's located on the College Avenue campus. And actually all of those cultural LLCs as well are located on the College um, Avenue campus. And leadership is what it sounds like. We're gonna expose you to um, terms and your personality style as it relates to your leadership to learn about it. Um, yeah, there's a number of LLCs. So just you know, check out our page and see if there's anything that interests you and apply before June 7th. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Leggett, for your time. Students, thank you for hopping on and sharing your experience. It was eye-opening for me. I learned a ton during this session and get a lot of questions on the LLCs. So thank you for educating me. Thank you, um, students who were just recently admitted. Congratulations on your admission. We have just about two weeks to hit that button and get to be a Scarlet Knight. So come and join us. Um, it's gonna be fantastic getting back on campus. Um, so again, this recording will be up on the Rutgers Business School website by tomorrow. Thank you all, stay safe, and we'll see you guys in the fall. All right, thank all right. have a great night, everyone. Take care, everybody. Bye. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye.